Hi folks, thanks for tuning in today. I just want to have you turn to your Bibles, or turn in your Bibles to Psalm 46. Psalm 46. Uh, while you're turning there, I'm going to open us up in a word of prayer. Father, I just want to thank you again for another opportunity to put out a video and pray that you would uh, just speak to the hearts and minds of those that are watching and uh, continue to speak to my heart and mind, Lord, as you have uh, taught me and shown me things as I've studied and prayed and and uh, sought your will with regard to uh, where to go with these videos and what topics to uh, discuss. And I pray that you would uh, just have your will in your way in all those things and that you would have your will in your way in our hearts and minds as we deal with the challenges of life uh, in our world today and, and uh, understanding your word in light of those things. And just pray that you would uh, help us there, Lord. And thank you for your great mercy toward me in my life and all those that uh, seek you, Lord, and uh, seek to confess their sins and, and seek you for for uh, um, reconciliation uh, with you uh, through your grace and through the blood of Christ. Lord, we're just so thankful for those things uh, that we can uh, tap into and get a hold of, Lord, and we're thankful for the strength of God in our lives. Pray that you would, uh, once again, Lord, that you would speak through me with this message and do your work in and through it. We'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. We're in Psalm 46, and I want to read the first seven verses of Psalm 46 today. It says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore will, I not, uh, will not we fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, Selah. There is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her. And that right early, the heathen raged. The kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice. The earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. God is our refuge. This is the title of my message for this video. God is our refuge. And I don't know about you, but I'm feeling pretty unsettled these days. Uh, everything that is happening in our country right now has me feeling a, a heaviness, like nothing I've felt before. Uh, it's like that heaviness has kind of taken over. It's, it's ruling the world, raining down on us like a weight uh, that can't be lifted. This heaviness might not feel so heavy if it was just a feeling, but it's not. It's very real, and it has faces. I've seen heathen faces before, but so many faces in one place at one time that are utterly empty of God are frightening. But when those heathen faces are in a rage, it's downright terrifying. Recently, I've seen such faces on a handful of police officers. I've also seen them on a large number of those in positions of leadership and authority. But I've also seen these raging, terrifying faces on mobs of people who are bent on destruction and indiscriminate violence. My friends... If you're seeing what I'm seeing, and if you're feeling what I'm feeling, then let's remind ourselves that God is still real, that his word is still true. Let me encourage you, when heaviness reigns, be strong. When the heathen rage, be still. Because when God responds from heaven, and he will, you and I will need to be ready to stop our own noise and be silent and listen. In the meantime, Psalm 46 can help us. Verse 1 tells us God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Psalm 119.28 says, and this has been my frequent prayer these past six months, it says, my soul melteth for heaviness. Strength, uh, strengthen thou me, 
according to thy word. My friends, first of all, number one, when heaviness reigns, be strong. Ephesians 6.10, uh, it, you know, it's our own strength that I'm calling to you. Uh, it, it's, it's not our own strength that I'm calling you to. And I wanted to show you this from Ephesians 6.10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Your own strength is not strong enough. My own strength is not powerful enough. But his strength is real. His strength is powerful. His strength is mighty. It's mighty to save. It's mighty to the pulling down of strongholds. Get a hold of God. When you don't have the strength to hold on, he won't let go. Joshua 1.9, Have not I commanded thee, be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. When heaviness reigns, be strong. Then secondly, when the heathen rage, be still. Psalm 46 again, if you go back to Psalm 46, we're going to read verses 6 and 7 this time. It says, The heathen raged, the kingdoms were moved, he uttered his voice, the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. And then down in verse 10, move down to verse 10. It says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. Have you ever gone swimming at the beach and been stuck in deep sand under the water? The struggle to get out can be scary, depending on how deep you are. If the water is over your head, it's terrifying. But if this has ever happened to you, you know that fighting and struggling and panicking just makes you sink deeper and faster. The same is true when you're in the muck of chaos and the world around you is going crazy. The answer is to stop struggling, to be still, to wait on God. If only for just a moment, he can give you a level head, a sense of direction. But if you're fighting and struggling and panicking, you won't hear him over your own chaos. Be still. Listen for his still small voice. Psalm chapter 2, or Psalm, the second Psalm. If you wanted to turn there quick, you could, but keep a mark there at 46, Psalm 46. Uh, Psalm 2, I'm going to read the first five verses for you. You can just listen or turn there. It's up to you. It says, Why do the heathen rage, and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves, and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, Let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in derision. Then shall he speak unto them in his wrath and vex them in his sore displeasure. My friends, the world may be crazy around you. Maybe you feel like the governments of our world are, have gone mad. Maybe you're in a place where lawlessness has taken control. And people are shaking their fists at authority and or shaking their fists at God. Don't panic. God will have the last laugh. Be still and know that He is God. Be patient and know that he will respond from heaven. And thirdly, when heaven responds, be silent. When heaven responds, be silent. As important as it is to be strong when heaviness reigns, and as crucial as it is to be still when the heathen rage, it's equally as important to be silent when heaven responds so that you can hear and understand Zechariah 2.13 says, Be silent, O all flesh, before the Lord, for he is raised up out of his holy habitation. My friends, when confusion and chaos become the rule, God is not the author of it. 
you can be sure that when sin abounds, it's not God's plan. Satan is real. And he's the God of this world. Sin is real and is at the root of destructive behavior. But God is all-powerful, and he will have the last word. What we need to do is learn to see the world with God's eyes and not expect God to limit himself by seeing only through our eyes. We may be seeing death and destruction, but we only see the visible temporal world. There's a spiritual realm and there's an eternal perspective that that you and I can't see. Behind the people who are stealing, killing, and destroying are unseen enemies doing the same. But they are far more powerful and far more destructive. They're a real source or the real source of that heaviness we feel. But not to worry. God is stronger. When the heathen rage, be still and know that God is our refuge. And when heathen, uh, when heaven responds, our silence can only help us to understand, to see how great our God really is. Are you resting in God, resting on him as your ref- refuge in these storms? Do you know him? Are you aware of his greatness and his power in spite of the insanity or the intensity of what you see with human eyes? Fear is a normal response, but we must not live in fear. Come to Christ. See his perfect love and that that his perfect love is able to cast out fear. Surrender yourself. Surrender your sin. Surrender your own efforts to make sense of all of this on your own. It's only through Christ that we can be strong through the heaviness. It's only through Christ that we can be still among the heathen that are raging. And only Christ can silence our hearts enough to give us ears to hear and eyes to see heaven's glorious response to the darkness of the lost and dying world. Do you understand what I'm trying to say today? Do you, does, this, does this resonate with you? I know the world is in chaos. I know that, 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 that things look crazy. And I, I, I know that there's, there's, there's hate and uh, various angles and various perspectives. And I know there's destruction happening and Uh, things burning and people getting hurt and people getting killed and things happening in the world like, like we've never seen them before in our lifetime. But God is still here. God is still alive. He's still our refuge. And, And if you can just get a hold of him, if you don't know him, if you don't know Christ as your Lord and Savior today, you need him. We all need him. There is nothing we can do truly without him. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. You cannot have peace and you cannot have a relationship with God except through Jesus Christ. You need him. You need him today if he's not part of your life. Please get a hold of him. Pick up a Bible. Look through what it says. Read the book of John, uh, a good uh, introduction to the gospel, to the story of the of Christ, his death, burial, and resurrection, what he did for us. Read the book of 1 John and see what it means to be a genuine believer in Christ. If you have questions, if you have needs, if you need prayer, if you just need a little hope to get to the next day, whatever it is that you need, I'm here to do what I can to help you. I truly, genuinely want to be a help to anyone that needs it. And I I pray that, that you'll contact me if you need something if you need prayer, if you need help, if you need some direction that maybe I can help you with. I'm human just like you, uh, but I believe that God is all-powerful and almighty, that he can be our refuge if we allow him to. Contact me. You can get more information at johnclawton.org, or you can contact me directly, john at johnclawton.org. Thanks for watching.